All right, this Bible study is going to be a quick one, I'm hoping. And it's going to be how to find the true church. Now, there's a lot of churches that will tell you that, well, they're, you know, they'll say, they will say, we are the only true church. I mean, you got the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Catholics, the Vatican. Uh, they all say that they're the true church. But what does the Bible say? What is the church? Well, let's take the words of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So what's the true church? Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he says, in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Well, what name is that? Is it Yahua or Yahashua or uh, Yeshua or Yeshu or what is it? Well, it's all a matter of whether or not you believe the Bible. And personally, I believe the King James Bible because that's the one that all their modern Bible, the, the people that promote the modern Bibles, that's the Bible that they hate the most, is the King James. That's the one that they tell you that, well, if you believe that, you're in a cult. A cult, not occult. Occult means hidden. Well, you know what? How many martyrs do the sacred name or Hebrew roots people have? And the answer is, to my knowledge, zero. Do you know how many people died to give us the Geneva Bible and the King James Bible? Many. You can read about how William Tyndale, who laid the groundwork for the King James Bible, how the, the Vatican's stooges tied him to the stake and used his own, the, the paper from his own Bible, to kindle a fire and burn him alive. I mean, did Jesus ever say, uh, kill people that don't believe the same things that you do? No. I tell you what, I would sure hate to be the people that burned William Tyndale alive with the words of Jesus printed on them that were translated from Greek into English. And let me tell you something, people. The Bible was not written in Latin until after it was written in Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek, and then translated into Latin. So when the, 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 the Roman Catholic Church claims to be the only true church, well, you were, they were speaking Latin, not Greek. There are 5,000 fragments and manuscripts in the Greek. There are zero Hebrew manuscripts. Zero. In Matthew chapter 1, the beginning of the Gospels, the beginning of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See, the thing was, this is written in Greek. That's why it says, which being interpreted is God with us, because it wasn't in Hebrew. 
I mean, the word, you know, when you pronounce the words, they sound alike, but they're spelled differently because they're different alphabets in, in, in English. How do you spell beer? B-E-E-R. In German, how do you spell beer? B-I-E-R. It's the same thing. Well, I, I beg to differ. German beer is not American swill water. What can I tell you? But I don't even drink the stuff anymore. But I'm just speaking from my experience when I was in the Army back in the 70s. And I was stationed over in Germany where I drank real beer. It's spelled different, but it's the same thing. It's just a different language. You know, what can I tell you? And I'm not promoting the use of beer. I'm just, that was the first word that popped into my brain. Uh, so, Matthew 1, chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, which shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. How come the Hebrew roots people don't use Emmanuel? No, they got to use the Yeshua, Yeshua, whatever, that's not even in the New Testament anywhere. Why don't they use Emmanuel? Why not? Emmanuel's in the Old Testament too. Sure it is. Now, if you want to check, if you want to buy a Bible and you want to check its accuracy, it's real simple. You go to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin. Now, if it says young woman, uh, I throw it in the garbage. The old Hebrew traditional Masoretic text says virgin. Of course, they'll try to convince you that it means young woman. What does that mean? An 11-year-old got pregnant? That doesn't mean she's a virgin. And a woman could be 45 years old and get pregnant. You know, there's a big difference between young woman and a virgin. Just because a woman's young and gets pregnant, that's not a miracle. Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now that's a miracle. And then the New Testament tells you Emmanuel means God with us. All right, let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. Verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So when somebody says Yeshua or whatever, Yahashua or Yeshua, whatever garbage they're spouting that's not in the New Testament anywhere, hold them to the word Emmanuel. And if, and if they refuse to use the word Emmanuel, well, they're not talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, when people try to tell you, well, you know, the Jesus is, and they have all these little arguments, basically what they're telling you is that they're smarter than the translators of the King James Bible. They know more than the 50 plus translators of the King James Bible. And what they're really doing is they're denying the King James Bible. They're denying the word of God. And they're telling you that they're smarter than God because God couldn't preserve his words. Satan won. And they're here to correct Satan's victory for changing Jesus and they're really telling you, oh, Yeshua, that's, that's the real name of God. Oh, really? So we've lost. We really, we, we lost the word of God until these sacred name Hebrew roots people rolled around to correct us. 
No. You don't like the word Jesus? Fine, use Emmanuel. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I have no problem with that. But when they tell you, oh, well, there's no J in Jesus, well, guess what? I guess Jews don't exist either because there's no J in Jews, right? So they're basically is. E-W-S, is. Yeah, it was spelled differently. And guess what? The spelling has changed over the last four and five hundred years. They, there's a couple of different letters, you know. That doesn't mean that, you know, it just means they, they, we didn't standardize the spelling until, uh, uh, I think it was Noah Webster or Daniel Webster, I forget which one, one of the two Websters, standardized the spelling in the English. I mean, how do you spell honor in, Engl in America? H-O-N-O-R. Color, C-O-L-O-R. You know the British add a U? C-O-L-O-U-R. Color. Honor, H-O-N-O-U-R. Does, and then people will tell you, oh, well, you know, that's wrong because it doesn't have a U or it does have a U. I mean, you know, th that's their arguments. Oh, well, there was no J in Jesus. Well, there's no J in Jews either. So I guess the Jews don't exist. That means they're counterfeits, right? So what's the real church? The church is where two or three are gathered together in his name. And he called his name Jesus. I don't see Yeshua HaMashiach anywhere. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, before they had... Well, you know. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away pri uh, privily, privately. Privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a, in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. Now this is an angel speaking. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord, the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. See, all these Hebrew roots people, basically what they're doing is denying the New Testament. They're denying the book of Matthew. They're denying all this and telling you, oh, well, don't listen to the Bible. Listen to me. His real name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, you know who Yeshua is? Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. He was a Lubavitch Chabad, C-H-A-B-A-D, Lubavitch rabbi who died, and they're still waiting for him to be resurrected, he was a Kabbalist. He was into Kabbalah, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H, which is, look it up. Look up Kabbalah. It's Satanism and witchcraft. It's magic. They're still waiting for him to rise from the dead. Well, they're going to be, I I'm sorry, he's not going to be rising from the dead for at least a thousand years from now at the white throne judgment of Christ. Hmm. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel, was sent from God 
unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. He shall be great. And he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. You know what? Let me tell you something, people. You know why they don't like the word, the name Jesus? Because devils tremble at that name. They tremble at that name. Just, you know, unbelieving Jews that hate Jesus, that deny him as the Messiah, they're not afraid to call Rabbi Menachem Schneerson Yeshua. Uh, what was that other rabbi? Uh, the one that they're, Kaduri. He wrote Yeshua on a piece of paper, and everybody's like, oh, that's Jesus. No, it's not. He was, a, he was in the Kabbalah, too. Kabbalah. Look it up. Look up. Type into Google, C-H-A-B-A-D, and then type in K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. Read about the Kabbalah. Take an hour. Don't take my word for it. Look up and see what they actually, these Kabbalah Jews actually believe. Magic and witchcraft. And when you go, these little Hollywood celebrities, and they're wearing these little red strings, guess what? That's how they tell each other, this is what we believe. We believe in this stuff. Oh, yeah. So, who is Yeshua? Yeshua is whoever your Messiah is. To a Satanist, Lucifer's Yeshua. That's their Messiah. That's their Savior. What can I tell you? But me, I'm not ashamed of the word Jesus. It's in my Bible. I believe it. So what's the true church? Where two or three people gather together in that name. And if somebody refuses to use that name, well, you're not welcome in my house. Get away from me. Now, let me tell you something, another thing. Most of these places, these buildings that have the name church on them, you know, whether it's First Baptist Church or United Methodist Church or Presbyterian Church or Methodist Church or whatever, uh, there's a thing. 90-something percent of them, I mean, probably 98, 99% of them are incorporated by the state as a business. They have articles of incorporation. That means they are a government corporation. They're recognized as a business. And guess what? They have a board of directors. They have a set of rules that they have to follow from the state that they are incorporated in. And they're under what's called 501 or 501, not 501. There's no O, it's a zero. 501C3. And that's the IRS tax exempt code. And to be tax exempt, you have to follow a certain set of rules. So if there's an election coming up and you got a guy that prof professes Jesus Christ and then you got another political candidate that's a sodomite 
that says, well, I believe in, you know, you should be able to have abortion and, and uh, Christian parents shouldn't be allowed to raise their children because they're going to warp their minds reading the Bible that the, the state should, Child Protective Services should take those children away from them and give them out for adoption to, 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 to two sodomites. And you got two political candidates, one a Christian and one a sodomite. Guess what? If the church comes out and says, well, we think all of you should vote for the Christian guy, guess what? That's illegal for them. They will, the government says you can't do that. We'll take your tax-exempt status away. And you'll the church, that business that calls itself a church will have to pay taxes on all the money that they collect. So if you want to be tax exempt, you got to follow our rules. So if our if the state says, well, you know, we want abortion legal, uh, we want sodomite marriages, that's got to be legal. Uh, hey, the the uh, business that calls masquerades itself as a church can't say anything. So, you know, when they use the name of Yeshua, they're they're not kidding. It's not, it's not the church that Jesus uh, created, believe me. And what can I tell you? You know, and I'm not incorporated as a 501 or 501c3 corporation or a business. So it's just little old me. Guess what? I bought my own computer. I bought my own microphone. I paid... For all this stuff myself you know I, you don't see me begging you telling you to pay tithes and isn't it funny that all the Old Testament laws were done away with they were nailed to the cross except for the tithe well let me tell you something people the tithe was for the tribe of Levi they were the 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 tribe that was to serve God in the tabernacle so unless your pastor is a, a Levite priest of one of the tribes of Israel, he's not even entitled to the tithe. So, you know, is your church a business? I Whatever state you live in, type in your state's name, and then, for example, let's say Tennessee or Texas. Texas, Department of State. And then look up, business look up. Type in your church's name that you attend, and you'll see, chances are, boom, your church, so-called, is a registered corporation. So is that going to church? No, you're going to a business that has the name church in it. I mean, let's face it, Federal Express, FedEx, is that part of the federal government? No, federal's just in the name. So, what's the true church? Where two or three gather together in the name of Jesus. I mean, it doesn't get any plain or simpler than that. You know, don't support the beast. Don't feed the beast. You know, the Bible says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her plagues. And, you know, you can't reform Babylon. It's impossible. I tried. I looked for a church for years. I pleaded with the pastors for years, showed them plain things in the Bible, and it didn't matter because they're part of Babylon. They're the beast. You know, a true man of God, when you show him something in the Bible plain and clear, they say, wow, I repent of this. I was wrong. And they change. But not, not these people. Because it's a corporation. Sanctioned by the state. Approved by the IRS. People, where two or three of you are gathered together in the name of Jesus, that's the church. You don't go to church. You are the church. In Galatians 3.29, it says, And if ye be Christ, 
Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And I promised to uh, get cracking on the um, And They Worship the Dragon series. I just thought I would bring this up. You know, people, no one goes to church since the church is where two or three believers gather in the name of Jesus. Virtually all go to a 501c3 tax exempt business housed in a building with the name of church in it. And like I say, it is a creation of the state as a business masquerading as a church, plain and simple. The pastor and board are the corporation officers and the members are the customers. Jesus never asked Rome for permission to preach. Neither did Peter or Paul. Ask your preacher to preach who was responsible for the death of Jesus. And guess what? In John 19, verse 12, it was not Pontius Pilate. It was not Rome. And see that it never happens. Ask why. In John 19, 12, and from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Release who? Jesus. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, if thou, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. You see, Pilate was the ruler of, administrator of that province in, of Rome. He didn't want to, he tried to release Jesus. You know, Jesus didn't ask Pilate, uh, can I get a tax exempt certification from you and permission from you to preach? No. No. Neither to Peter, neither to Paul. You know, and what can I tell you? You people are the church. You don't, the building that's uh, where that business is ha housed, that's masquerading of a church, that's not a church. So what can I tell you? Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.